What's going on, guys? It's Investing Hustle here, and today I have lots of news. We have some news on Afria, on Aurora Cannabis, and more. We're going to talk about the cannabis sector today. But before we get started, if you guys are new here, don't forget to subscribe. I talk about the stock market. I have some cool videos on Warren Buffett, on anything related to investing or making money or bettering your life. Either way, before we get started, let's not forget to give this video a thumbs up, but let's get right into the news. So first of all, we're going to talk about Aurora Cannabis. Finally, we have a green day. And if you guys caught my pre-market live this morning, we did talk about how all these companies were in the green this morning. So it is looking like a green day so far. Hopefully, I'm not talking too soon but we're going to talk about some of the hottest companies today and one company i want to talk about is flower which is ticker symbol f l w r currently up 13.9 percent now they do seem to be a little bit overbought but we still got a little more room for upside i personally won't be buying around these ranges because we did break above this um current resistance line right now so flower stock is on fire up 13.9 percent and we're going to look at their technical analysis which is a buy and a strong buy one minute is a sell buy and a strong buy but there is one problem i see with this company price to revenue 177 price to sales 177 in my books this company looks a little overvalued also total assets 67 million with the market cap of 509 million I'm I'm not saying this company is not going to continue to push forward. It just looks overbought, overvalued right now. Um, just be careful. Don't chase this stock. If um, if I had a position in this company, I would definitely be collecting some profits. But just remember this video is strictly for entertainment and educational purposes. Make sure to always do your own due diligence and always follow your gut. Next company on fire today is Cube, up 12%. Also have ticker symbol LABS, Metafarm Labs, up 9%. Jern is up 8.8%. MRMD is up 9.3%. Cali is up 8.3%. Planet 13 is once again on fire today, up 7.13%. It's not all green. We're going to look at a, at a few of the biggest losers today. We have ticker symbol GXXM down 17.23% now. And it is a sub penny stock. And this is why I always say penny stocks or sub penny stocks are always high risk. And as you can see right now, most of these companies that are in the red right now are penny stocks. Pineapple Express is down 25%. That's a penny stock. THCT, THC Therapeutics is down 18%. Another penny stock is down 10%, ticker symbol PUFXF. But just remember, with penny stocks, usually you see big swings. So I won't be surprised to see some of these companies in the green tomorrow after a huge red day. Another one, MGWFF is down 11%. So I wanna get straight into the news and it's gonna be some good news. American cannabis market fueled by positive legislation. So cannabis may be illegal on a federal level across the United States, but that hasn't stopped a multi-billion dollar industry from emerging on the state level. While some investors have avoided the country's cannabis market due to the federal risk, new cannabis legislation in the House and Senate could dramatically reshape the industry's risk profile. The legislation of adult-use cannabis across a growing number of states could also create new opportunities. So Senator Cory Booker introduced the Marijuana Justice Act earlier this year to deschedule cannabis and expunge past cannabis-related convictions. Supporters argue that marijuana use is roughly equivalent across the population, but African Americans are 3.7 times more likely to be arrested for marijuana possession. Majorities across both political parties are ready to change and support legalization with little regional variance. So aside from social justice, the Safe Banking Act promises to eliminate problems with cannabis banking. The bill offers targeted federal protection for credit unions and other financial institutions for accepting deposits, extending credit, and providing payment services to cannabis businesses as long as they are compliant with state regulations. The move could increase transparency for cannabis businesses and make transactions easier. So these bills and several others are being debated in the House and Senate could radically transform cannabis laws in the United States. So Michigan became the first Midwest state to legalize adult use cannabis in December 2018, which is significant given the Midwest conservative political values and the state's high cannabis usage. New Jersey experienced a setback when it attempted to legalize adult use cannabis earlier this year because the New York governor, Andrew Cuomo, aims to pass marijuana. How to invest in these trends? There are many different companies that are 
are well positioned to take advantage of the rapidly growing recreational trends in the United States. I'm going to name some of them. Grown Rogue International Inc., which is NVSIF. Another one, one of my favorite companies, Planet 13. And I've made many videos on Planet 13. If you guys haven't checked them out, I, have, I provide lots of information on them. And I've been talking about Planet 13 almost for the past year. And lately, Planet 13 has been on fire. So Planet 13 has developed one of the largest cannabis superstores in the country in Las Vegas, Nevada. The company's cannabis entertainment complex has become a tourist destination of, of its own. Rubicon Organics, ticker symbol R-O-M-J-F. And there's plenty more, but those are the three mentioned in this article. So I'm gonna move on to the next article. I'm just gonna skim by these articles real quick. A detailed look at how canopy growth tops 500,000 kilos in peak annual production. So today, canopy growth is the largest publicly traded pot stock in the world with a market cap of just shy of 15 billion. This also makes it the only marijuana stock with a true large cap valuation. Or cannabis is closing with a market cap of $9 billion. So an inside look at Canopy's path to more than 500,000 kilos of annual production. So Delta, British Columbia, this roughly 1.7 million square foot facility is a hybrid greenhouse. It combines controlled greenhouse environment with the benefits of full spectrum sunlight and field growing with a post-harvesting processing set center. Another one is in Alder Grove. British Columbia, and this is a 1.3 million square foot farm. It's also a hybrid greenhouse. And there's another one on Niagara Lake, and this is a 1 million square foot grow farm hybrid greenhouse. Smith Falls, Ontario, which they're spanning to approximately 730,000 square feet. St. John's in Newfoundland and Labrador, this facility is 150,000 square foot square feet. And this list goes on forever. So making sense of all that data, so how does kind of canopy growth get 500,000 plus kilos of peak production per year with this puzzle of grow farms above? The simple answer is that its five biggest facilities will do most of the work. Throughout the industry, the average yield per square foot is about 100 grams, Given the canopy, given canopy's listed space, this should yield around 560 kilograms a year. But it's not that simple. So remember that not every square inch of space is listed above is devoted to growing. At least some square footage is set aside for processing or perhaps even extraction or alternative products in select farms. But when it's all said and done, canopy growth will likely produce closer to 525,000 kilos a year behind um, Aurora Cannabis, which at peak will be able to produce 700,000 kilos per year. So if you guys want to check out this full article you guys could check could type this in on google a detailed look at how canopy grow tops 500,000 kilos in peak annual production on to some good news for afria afria continues expansion questions catalysts and hurdles every marijuana stock investor should be considering so on april 5th the company announced that its german subsidiary afria Duschland, which is afria germany has been selected by german federal institutes for drugs and medical devices to receive a license for domestic cultivation of medical cannabis. And we've all heard about this news and most of the talk was about Aurora Cannabis, but no one really mentioned Afria. So yes, Afria was one of the other companies that was selected by the General Institute for Drugs. The company also launched its first CBD-based natraceutical products on the German market. The product part of the Can Relief brand used hemp-derived CBD and is produced in the European Union. And if we look at Afria today, Afria seems to be having a fairly good day, up 3.5%. Currently trading in between this support and this resistance, we are using this land as a resistance. So I would love to see Afria break above the $14 resistance line. We were uptrending and we kind of started consolidating. We started consolidating and now we are trading sideways. Once these allegations are fully put behind us, I do think Afria will one day be reaching back above this resistance, hopefully using it as a support in the near future. Afria is a profitable company with a PE ratio of 35. Um, price to revenue 56, price to sales 87. Still a little overvalued, but when you compare it to its peers like Canopy, Aurora, Kronos, and Tilray, Afria has a better valuation than their peers. Total assets of 2 billion with a market cap of 3.2 billion. I do think Afria is a better option when you compare it to companies like um, Canopy, Kronos, Tilray, even Aurora. They do seem a little more overvalued than Afria. Of course, the one thing that's holding Afria back is those allegations. But And let's not forget, Afria is a profitable company. On to the next news, which is Aurora Cannabis. And it is Aurora Cannabis provides construction update on Aurora Sun. So today, Aurora Cannabis announced an update on its status of the Aurora Sun. The facility will be expanded to 1.62 million square feet, representing 33% increase from its 
units originally planned 1.2 million square feet. The company is confident in projecting an expected production capacity at Aurora Sun in the in excess of 200,000 kilograms of high quality cannabis per annual. More about the Aurora Sun facility. So there will be 37 growing rooms, each at 32,500 square feet. At full operation, there will be more than 1 million plants in various stages of growth in the facility at any given time. Increased automation through next generation robotic shuttles to mobilize benches, increased operational speed and facility efficiency while allowing for multiple product streams simultaneously, expanded and upgraded facility automation systems for cloning and production, further lowering anticipated production costs, and next generation low maintenance climate management system for superior plant health yield and cannabinoid potency, upgraded weather readiness design to drive even greater operating efficiencies, additional energy efficiency, energy management via improved implement of the thermal screens, and so on. So there's an evolved design. Aurora Sun will be even more technologically advanced than Aurora Sky in a number of ways, including process and technological upgrades that are aimed to increase economic efficiencies and customer-driven flexibility to meet future evolutions in the market requirement. And um, thanks to this news, I don't think it's this news alone. I just think overall the market has seen some pretty good news. But right now we also have Aurora Cannabis up 3%. And I am going to talk about Aurora Cannabis charts for a little bit. And I've been talking about this uptrend support line. And like I, I mentioned this on my video yesterday, Aurora Cannabis hit this support line, immediately got rejected. And now we're back to uptrending and that's perfect. I, during this run, I've been talking about Aurora being way overbought and I wouldn't mind seeing a pullback back to the support line. And that's literally what happened. Aurora was way overbought here. It went above this resistance line, immediately got rejected. Now we hit the support and hopefully more good things to come. We're going to continue to bounce up, continue to uptrend. It's not guaranteed. There's always the possibility that it could go back below the support line. Obviously, that's not what we want to see. We currently do have another support line right here at around $8.75, which we bounced off one, two, three, four times. So hopefully we continue to uptrend and not trade sideways. But there is a possibility. There's two possibilities. Aurora can continue trading sideways in between this support right here, or we can go back to uptrending and hopefully my prediction for Aurora Cannabis um, reaching $14 Canadian by... Uh, mid-May or the end of April comes true. On to some other news, High Tide announces $10 million offerings of convertible debentures. So High Tide today announced that it has launched a non-brokered private placement for, for the sale of up to 10,000 convertible debentures of High Tide at a price of $1,000 per debenture for gross proceeds of up to $10 million Canadian. The offering is anchored by an order from Afria, a leading global cannabis company in the amount of $4.5 million Canadian dollars. The net proceeds of the offering will be used by the company to fund the construction of Canna Cabana, Kush Bar, and Smoker's Corner stores, complete strategic acquisitions, as well as for general working capital purposes. So there's a lot of good news, a lot of positive, positive news in the whole sector, which explains why we had a nice green day. Hopefully we finished strong. And that's it for today, guys. Let me know what you guys think about all this news. Hopefully you guys are happy. We see a green day today and hopefully we end the day strong and that's it for now guys if you guys enjoyed this video don't forget to leave me a thumbs up and if you're not subscribed hit that notification bell smash that subscribe button i'll see you guys next time Bye bye